Welcome to the March 2015 episode of Iowa City in Focus. I'm your host, Mary Bryant. Are you ready to say goodbye to winter? This year certainly has had its share of cold temperatures and snow on the ground, which can be annoying for some, but for others, it means fun. On this month's episode, we'll look back at winter with a glimpse of Freeze Fest, a fun-filled event that celebrated winter and the many opportunities it affords. But first, we'll take you to the Animal Care and Adoption Center, which started a new series of educational workshops in February. Then I'll talk with Jen Jordan, Iowa City's Recycling Coordinator, about some updates that have recently been made to the curbside recycling program. Stay tuned! In 2015, we are starting a series of educational seminars that we're providing to the public that will be you know, open for anyone of all ages. They'll be free of charge. And our goal with this educational series is, is twofold. Um, we, we want to reach out to the community more and, and become more a part of our community. For the past seven years, we've been at the temporary facility and we've been a little bit removed, you know, mileage wise. Um, from our community and we want to get back out there and show people that we care about them um, and inv invest in them. So that's the one thing that we want to do and of course humane education can do a lot for uh, all of the animals in our community, for the people in our community um, and, and for what happens at the shelter here. Because if, if we can get out and, and talk to people about responsible pet care and help them with resources and, and questions and, and problems they might be having with pets or, or problems with wildlife or things like that, in the long run, um, that can be beneficial to us by possibly reducing numbers of animals that might be coming into the shelter. So, um, you know, less animals in is a good thing. March 21st. It is Pet Care 101, which is going to be really fun and exciting and encompass a lot of basic things uh, about pet care. When to invite a pet into your home, what's the right kind of pet for your home and your family and, and your lifestyle and things like that, and what sorts of responsibilities go along with that. And when you're ready, where to go to get a pet. Pet Care 101, I hope a lot of families come to because I think it's important for children to understand um, a little bit through their parents and with their parents what the responsibilities are. And then the third one that we have planned so far is um, pretty exciting too. We deal with a lot of wildlife here at the shelter, particularly the enforcement. The officers that go out you know, are picking up injured wildlife or baby animals that someone has found and, and you know, they aren't sure what to do with and the mom has disappeared, things like that. And so we, we work with rehabbers frequently to try to re rehabilitate or raise these little baby wild animals and then you know send them back out in the wild to live. But we'd like to avoid having some of that happen and so what we're going to try to do is an educational program on living with wildlife in our urban setting and, and what to do when you find wildlife, um, how to prevent wildlife issues within your home or you know where you're living in your, your garages and fireplaces and things like that. Later on in the year, as the year goes on, we've got um, dog bite prevention, which will be real important and will definitely be geared towards children. Um, children ages four to seven are really the ones that are most affected by um, dogs in the community and dog bites and so we really want to reach that um, age group of children and I think it's important to involve the parents and educate the parents on what to look for to be safe and things like that too. The other workshops um, for the remainder of the year are canine body language. It's a little bit more of an intensive workshop on understanding dog body language and dog communication so that you can work better with your own pet um, or if you're handling animals that are unknown so that you can be more safe. We are scheduled to move into our new location on Napoleon Lane in August of 2015 and we are just absolutely thrilled and, and very excited um, that that's, this is finally happening. It's been, it's been a long seven years but I bet the next seven months are going to go pretty quickly and soon we'll be ready to move in. So um, there has been amazing community support all along the way and in many different forms and we were really, really grateful for that. So. Again, you know, I think programs like educational programs and everything that we can do to engage the citizens and give back to them um, is our way of telling them thank you. Don't miss Pet Care 101 on March 21st or a walk on the wild side, living with urban wildlife on April 23rd. 
We'll keep you updated as more workshops are scheduled, but you can also keep an eye on the Animal Care and Adoption Center's events calendar at icanimalcenter.org. Now let's talk about recycling. You may have heard that there were a few items added to the list of materials accepted in curbside recycling bins, but do you know what those items are and how to sort them into your bins? Check out my interview with Jen Jordan for answers. Today I'm talking with Jen Jordan, the Recycling Coordinator for the City of Iowa City, and we're talking about the City's curbside recycling program. So Jen, can you tell me about the updates that have been made recently? Sure. We're always looking to add new materials to the program to make it more convenient for people to recycle at the curb rather than having to take things to a drop-off site. So in our partnership with City Cart and Recycling, um, we've actually been able to add some kind of interesting new things. Ooh. I'll start with aluminum. Um, we've taken cans off and on in the past, but we can now take aluminum foil as long as it's clean and washed. And I just have kind of rolled into a ball. We say two inch balls to put, so we can get to it easier in the bin. So something like that. And that would just go in with the, in a dual sort, in our dual sort system, would go in with the plastics and other cans. So you can see there's my, there, my Progresso chickpeas in here. So the metal and plastic can go into one. And then the other material that we've added recently, and this is just one of the two kinds, is an aseptic or gable top container. So this one is, for instance, a soy milk. There's a tofu container. So you can see there's, there's a metal liner and then a, a paper and plastic coating in, on the outside. So that goes in with a paper side of the recycling bin. Or if you use two bins, you can put this stuff in one bin and, and the plastic and, and metal in another bin. Great. Well, that actually looks pretty easy. When you said yeah. you'd added more, I was worried you were going to have to be having maybe three or four different um, uh, bags, <laughs> but no, this is good. Nope, it can still go in the same two sort system. And then if you have, you see, I have some cardboard in here, which is fine. If you do have bigger pieces of cardboard, they have to be broken down into two by two squares. Those big squares, if they don't fit in the bin, can just go under it instead. Okay. Uh, so these are also accepted at, at drop-off sites? Right, so if people don't have curbside recycling in Iowa City, or Coralville for that matter, or anywhere in the county, we can take the same materials at the drop-off sites. Um, so the metal and the aluminum foil would actually just go in the metal containers, and we mm. have drop-off sites around the community, including City Carton, here at the landfill at the Eastside Recycling Center and North Dodge Hy-Vee. The City of Coralville also has one. I'm not sure what they're taking these days. Our programs are a little bit different, though, so people should check the Coralville website for that. So those would just go in the metal container at the drop-off site. And uh, these, the cartons and the aseptic packaging get a little tricky. In Iowa City, at the Eastside Recycling Center, we have a special, a special container for these, but in any of the situations, they can go in with the paper at any of the drop-off sites. Oh, so, okay. Yeah, so it's, it's a little bit different from at the curb, but still pretty easy. Okay, that sounds great. So, Jen, what else do you have going on? Well, Earth Month is coming up in April, so we are working on some planning for that. It'll all be on our website. It's icgov.org uh, slash ESRC. Then we also have a bunch of stuff coming up in March for a food waste reduction program that we've been working on called Food Too Good to Waste. Mm -hmm. So it's about helping households reduce the amount of food that they waste with some really simple strategies, and it can often help save households money, too. So it's a neat program. We're working with the Iowa City Public Library to do a bunch of films on Friday nights in March, and we'll have those on the, on the website very soon early in March. Great. Okay, well, thanks so much for talking with yeah. me today. Yeah, thanks for coming out. It's always great to talk about the recycling. The latest flyer covering curbside recycling is available at icgov.org recycling. You'll also find information there about recycling drop-off sites, as well as disposal alternatives, such as composting. And you know, Earth Month is just around the corner, so this is a perfect time to make changes at work and home that are a little more Earth conscious. If you need ideas on how to take that next step, Visit any of the URLs on screen to find eco-friendly resources, events, and suggestions. Now let's switch directions and take a look back at Freeze Fest, an event the Iowa City Parks and Recreation Department held in February to celebrate all things winter. Festival of Iowa City and where this program is so people can enjoy the outdoors and get outside get a little fresh air and still find fun things to do inside and enjoy the winter. We have lots of crafts and 
games. Uh, we have the Yucca Maniacs playing ukulele. And we have the Iowa City Bird Club, the Wildlife Camps, and many other groups, including Steam Lab. Big red line right here, that's the very bottom. So it's about six feet deep here. And you see this little yellow line up here. What that is, is it's actually your bait. So you're pretty high up. All the fish are down at the bottom. So we're gonna go ahead and make this a little deeper to try and catch some fish. He has some wonderful programs for kids and when our kids were little we really enjoyed bringing them to these kinds of things because it's really important for kids to be in contact with the outdoors to feel what it's like to be outside that it's not always real comfortable but afterwards you feel really really good so I think it's really important for kids development uh, and so I've seen a lot of really tiny kids here today, and I'm just thrilled that their their parents are getting them out to see the real world instead of electrons. It's so good for the kids. They gotta make and eat a cookie, and they're doing crafts, and they got hot chocolate, so it's been fun. I was actually just thinking when I was sitting with my kids as they're eating cookies, how what a what a great community we have that there's always these activities going on. gets a little monotonous, but um, February is a good time to say, hey, we don't need to stay inside. We can go outside and enjoy everything just as much and let's make it fun. Now that we've had that moment to appreciate and enjoy winter, we can say farewell to the cold and turn our thoughts towards spring. Be sure to catch next month's episode of Iowa City in Focus, when we'll be talking about community garden plots and introduce you to Iowa City's newest park. You can watch all of these segments again at citychannel4.com video, or by turning to Channel 5 and calling in to Video On Demand. Also, we would like to know what other city departments or programs you would like to hear more about. Let us know by sending an email to info at citychannel4.com or by leaving a comment on the City Channel 4 Facebook page at facebook.com slash citychannel4. And we have a new short weekly program you might like. It's called Iowa City Update, and that's exactly what it is, an update on city events and programs that are happening each week. So watch for it here on City Channel 4 or check it out online. Thanks for watching this month's episode and keeping Iowa City in focus. You're watching City Channel 4. On TV, online, on demand, on Facebook, and now on the go on your mobile device.